Well, if you're music this morning, we welcome you to worship today. Call your attention to the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, we continue the season of light that is Epiphany, and I'm glad that you are here. In the prayers of the church today, we remember the following persons. Uh, we celebrate with the Reeker family for Nolan Frank's uh, baptism this morning. Uh, this is two months in a row. Eight o'clock has had baptism, I'm just saying. That doesn't happen a whole lot, so congratulations. Uh, in rehabilitation, Laura Merce uh, Gilmore uh, is finishing up soon, hopefully. Hospitalized are Thelma Arand and Don Arand. Uh, home from the hospital, Laura Zeswitz and Greg Gillespie. Uh, Laura was finishing rehab. Greg had some uh, shoulder surgery. And some of you may be aware that uh, Pastor Bob Wegehoft passed uh, yesterday. Uh, yeah, he came down uh, with some serious sickness the last week or two and was hospitalized for about a week. So he, uh, he finally met his maker uh, yesterday, and uh, his funeral services are probably going to be this uh, Saturday. Don't have a time yet. Still have to meet with the family, but I'm pretty sure that's when they will be. And as always, we remember the orphans of Basoka. Activities this week include quilters on Monday at 10 o'clock, book club on Tuesday at 1.30 in the afternoon, Bible study Wednesday morning at 9.30, pub theology Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., and then we have winter uh, women's retreat this coming weekend. I uh, hope if you have uh, plans to go, you've already told Sister Dottie so she's aware. At this point, we invite you to turn to the uh, sacrament of uh, baptism. It's on page 227 in the front of your hymnal. I invite you to stand if you are able. Guys, you want to come down? <clears throat> we, welcome, we welcome this morning Ethan and Brittany Reeker, along with their son, Nolan Frank. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Brittany and Ethan, who do you present today to God in the presence of this congregation? We present Nolan Frank for baptism. Called by the Holy Spirit. Trusting in the love of God, do you desire to have Nolan baptized into Christ? As you bring Nolan to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people. Bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in his hands Holy Scripture and nurture him in faith and prayer so that Nolan may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God has made, and work for justice and peace. Brittany and Ethan, do you promise to help Nolan grow in Christian faith and life? We do. People of God, do you promise to support Nolan and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, say we do. We do. I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and by your word created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. 
At the river, your son John was baptized and was, was anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word that Nolan Frank, who is here washed in the waters of baptism, may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Nolan Frank, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's get you all dried up now. Oh, Lord. That was a mess. Where's the other one? Blessed be God, the source of all life, the word of salvation, the spirit of mercy. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Nolan Frank with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Nolan Frank, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Nolan Frank, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. <laughs> Amen. We're interested in that. <laughs> let us welcome Nolan Frank, our newly baptized we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. We'll continue with our opening hymn, invite you to stand, and I'll show off Nolan Frank a little bit if he lets me. Can I carry you around if I keep you up straight? Can we do that? Let's go see some people. I'll bring you right back to mommy. I'll bring you on up. <laughs> Nolan? Hi to everybody, huh? What do you think? Is Nolan? Yeah. This is Nolan. What do you think, buddy, huh? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, our strength and our Redeemer, by your Spirit hold us forever, that through your grace we may worship you and faithfully serve you, follow you, and joyfully find you. 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlines, pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born, while I was in my mother's womb. He named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward is with my God. <clears throat> and now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, who bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord. And my Lord has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One to be deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up, princes and they shall prostrate themselves because the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, he has chosen you. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Okay, we'll read Psalm 40 responsively. I waited patiently upon the Lord, who stooped to me and heard me cry. The Lord lifted me out of the desolate pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a high cliff, making my footing sure. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happier they who trust in the Lord. They do not turn to enemies or to those who follow lies. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. In your plans for us, none can be compared with you. Oh, that I can make them known and tell them. They are more than I can count. Sacrifice and an offering you do not desire, you have opened my ears. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you have not required. And so I said, here I come, in the scroll of the book it is written of me. I love to do your will, O God, your law is deep within me. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I have not restrained my lips, O Lord, you know. I have not hidden your righteousness in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your steadfast love, truth from the great assembly. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. May your steadfast love and your truth continually keep me safe. The second reading is from Corinthians. Paul called to an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God our son Satophthes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Jesus Christ, called to the saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Jesus Christ. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech, in knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples turned and saw them following. He said to them, What are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So what are you looking for? Or to put it differently, maybe, why are you here? You can probably guess some of your answers. Some of you are here because you have accepted responsibility for helping our service proceed smoothly this morning as an usher, communion assistant, AV tech. Or you're helping to lead liturgy later on in the service at some point, or be a musician. Or you're helping to build community as a welcome center host or a greeter, or as a host of the coffee bar between services, or a caretaker in the nursery. Some of you are here because your wife gave you the evil eye when you suggested that you might stay home and get ready for the Eagles game, or catch up on college basketball scores from last night. Some of you are here because it's what you do. It's part of the rhythm of your life. And if someone were to ask you, you would say that your week feels incomplete without having been in church. A couple of you might be looking for a new church home, wondering if this is the right match for you. Well, a few of you have come to see if you can reignite that spark that kept you here regularly prior to the COVID shutdown. Some of you are here to celebrate baptism with Nolan and his family. While some of you hope to hear words in a sermon that strengthen your faith, others may be consumed with thoughts of a loved one who is sick. And others will simply find beauty in the hymns that we sing. We could go on and on. Maybe a reason for each and every one of you that's a little bit different. People come to church for all kinds of reasons. Behind them all, in one way or another, there's really just one reason, one question that fuels our search, one question that drives our gathering. What are you looking for? It's not my question. It's Jesus' question for you from our gospel lesson today. These are the first words that Jesus speaks in John's gospel. What are you looking for? They are as relevant today in the year 2023 as they were for Andrew and his friend who met Jesus near Bethany on the day Jesus' ministry begins, in John's gospel at least. Is Jesus the one we are all looking for? I mean, we read the stuff he wrote, right, or said, excuse me. We pray to him. We try to follow his advice on how we should live our lives. Sometimes we cry to him in the dark nights of the soul in prayer. We thank him when our prayers are answered. 
We laugh when Jesus fills our life with joy. We struggle to understand the challenging words he sometimes offers to us. We name ourselves after him. The least we can do in return for his love, right, is to have a bit of a relationship with him, don't you think? So today, hoping to be inspired as we witness the initial encounter between Jesus and two men, will be, two men who will be his first disciples. Yes, as we stand in the presence of God in human flesh through our story, having been gifted with the privilege of asking him anything, anything these two disciples wanted, since they are the first disciples to speak in John's gospel, their big question is, where are you staying? Since they were disciples of John, they doubtless heard the Baptist talk about this prophet and Messiah. It was pretty much all John does in his early parts of the gospel. But all they could think to ask was whether Jesus was staying at the Hampton Inn or at the Econo Lodge. I think my questions to God are dumb sometimes. But as usual, at second glance, there's always more here than meets the eye. Because John the Evangelist uses a particular Greek word that our modern English translation weakly translates as stay. Listen to the translation of the exact same verse from the American Standard Bible. And Jesus turned and beheld them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? And they said unto him, Rabbi, where abideth thee? Where abideth thee? Where are you abiding? Now that is a deeper question, right? The Greek word for abide here is mene, which means to remain with. There's a sense of ongoing action to the word mene, and a spirit of relationship that goes along with this word that we voice as abide. And to make that clear, John uses this word not just once in this passage, but five times in this 14-verse passage, in this first, first chapter of his gospel. I won't read them all to you, but they're found in verses 32, 33, 38, and twice in 39. In this first chapter of John's gospel, probably suggests some importance to this word, abide, and why Jesus chooses it to describe his relationship to us, don't you think? What Andrew and his friend and really all of us are looking for is that Jesus, in fact, abides with us. I will admit, I'm not really a great fan of abiding. I much prefer doing over abiding. I'm not a good sitter and thinker and reflector. Even if the doing isn't constructive and as enriching as the abiding might be, I just sort of like, I'm hyper, I like to be doing stuff. I've never voluntarily taken a few days to spend time in quiet contemplation at a monastery. I've never signed up for a silent retreat experience. It sounds like torture to me. I love reading. I love writing. I love knocking around Bible passages and theological topics with others. But I'm not so good at this one-on-one -on -one stuff with God. Prayer is about all that I can manage because it feels one way to me. I'm just too hyper. Maybe some of you have a similar mindset. If not, I really admire you and your ability to abide with God. So today's lesson convicts, convicts me a little bit. Maybe it does you as well if you struggle with quiet reflection or opening yourself up to the still, small voice of God in your life. Because that is exactly what God invites us into, a relationship of abiding. God challenges us to recognize that the Christian life is about much more than just good deeds or even going to church. It's also about the need to understand and engage with the one in whose name we do those good deeds. Good deeds are important, certainly. And in most cases, they ease the suffering and struggles of those around us, those who use that faith gift as a way to improve their lives and strengthen themselves. 
But if we lose touch with the God who inspires that service, then we will eventually lose touch with the faith that supports and fuels everything we do for those around us. In the prologue to John's Gospel, we read these, ver these words in verse 14. Some of you may have these words on a refrigerator magnet in your home or a cross-stitch creation from great Aunt Sadie. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1.14. And guess what? Yep. The word abide shows up there. The word dwelt translates as abide. The word became flesh and abided with us. As Christians, we boldly claim that God came to earth, not only to redeem humanity, but to be in relationship with us, to walk in skin like ours. We baptized our newest believer today, Nolan Frank, and our prayer is that this baptism will begin a lifelong love affair between him and the God who created him. And our prayer is that this baptism does not stop today, but continues for decades and decades to come. More than 40 years ago, I served as a hospital chaplain as part of my clinical pastor edu pastoral education requirement for seminary, CPE for short. I spent the greater part of that, of that summer, every week for 10 weeks, in Lutheran Medical Center in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, back when Sunset Park was known for zip guns and gang warfare, not for uh, regentrified brownstones. It was a rough place to live. And my living quarters were those down, was one of those downtrodden uh, brownstones that had yet to be renovated. I shared it with two other classmates, or one classmate, and one person I had not known before. Dan Yeiser was my classmate. The other person I shared that home with, that, uh, that brownstone with, was named Menno Lestra. He was doing an extended unit of CPE. He was Dutch, and he uh, came from Holland, of course. He was a scholar. His nose was always in a book. And one night when we were both on call in the hospital, we were sitting in the, the on-call room sort of reading and waiting for the phone to ring. We got talking about our names. And I told him, that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, the derivative of my name is Crag, which means uh, in Gaelic, a rocky place, a rocky outcropping. And I thought, mm, you know, not a great name. Um, Although, as I said a couple weeks ago, it fits me, right? You guys know me, it fits me. My parents really did well in naming me, or maybe the name shaped me, who knows. When I asked Menno about his name, and I might have told some of you this story, maybe in Bible study, I'm not sure. He told me that most of the Dutch uh, would say that his name, Menno, had a German heritage, and it came from the word mine, which means strength. But then he said, a little more quietly, that he preferred to think of himself as a Greek. And in the Greek, meno means, guess what? Abide, right? Then he asked me, what would you rather have? A friend who is strong or a friend who stands by your side with his abiding spirit? It was an easy answer then as it is now. And although 40 years have passed and I've never crossed paths with Menno Leicester again, it's still an easy answer. Because I have a companion that stands at my side and at your side too. Call him by whatever name works for you. But we know that Jesus stands at our side in every circumstance of our lives with his abiding presence and strength and forgiveness and love and acceptance. Amen.
called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Put a new song in the mouth of your church, O God of life. Inspire the baptized to tell of your faithfulness, sharing the good news of your salvation throughout the earth. Bless the witness of missionaries and guide the ELCA and her bishops, empower our pastors and deacons, inspire our congregations, especially our mission partners, Word of Life Deaf and Busoka Lutheran churches, and bless Nolan in his new baptismal journey throughout his life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The waters of baptism call us into life in the spirit. Preserve the water, the world's waters, protect them from pollution, support plants and animals who depend upon them, and bring rain in places of drought. Guide us in protecting local waterways and in responding to devastating floods. Guide and grow faith in the newly baptized and all those who celebrate baptismal promises made on their behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Show your mercy to all nations. Direct leaders to do your will. Fill governing bodies with righteousness. Equip judges with discernment and compassion. Be especially present in Ukraine and Russia, Myanmar and Ethiopia, Afghanistan and Colombia. Watch over those who serve in the armed forces and bring peace to our lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You incline your ear to all who cry to you, O Lord. Draw near to individuals and communities suffering violence, injustice, illness, or poverty. Hide them in the shadow of your hand and make us signs of your faithfulness to all in need. We pray also for the ill, especially Don and Thelma Oran, those in rehabilitative care, especially Laura Merce Gilmore, those recovering at home, especially Laura Zeswitz and Greg Gillespie, those without families, especially the orphans of Basoka, along with those who grieve, especially the family of Pastor Robert Wegaha. Now remember those we know in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are glorified in the servants you have called into the world. With Martin Luther King Jr., give us a bold trust in you. Give us courage to receive your call and your justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In every time and place, you have sanctified your people. We praise you for the testimony of those who have died in the faith, including Martin Luther King Jr., renewer of society, Antony of Egypt, renewer of the church, Pacamius, renewer of the church, Henry, bishop of Uppsala, martyr, Agnes, martyr, and our own Pastor Robert Wegaha. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you our needs and our hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of peace.
Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. We magnify and adore through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. Thanks be to God.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. Go in peace, follow the way of Jesus. Thanks be to God.